Greetings, everyone. Today we're reading from Joshua 10, and I've entitled this particular devotion, The, Stun, the Sun Stood Still. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Now, King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem heard that Joshua had captured Ai and completely destroyed it, treating Ai and its king as he had Jericho and its king, and that the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were living among them. So Adonai Zedek and his people were greatly alarmed because Gibeon was a large city like one of the royal cities. It was larger than I, and all its men were warriors. Therefore, King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent word to King Hoham of Hebron, King Purim of Carmuth, King Japhia of Lachish, and King Debir of Eglon, saying, Come up and help me. We will attack Gibeon because they have made peace with Joshua, the Israelites. So the five Amorite kings, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish and Eglon joined forces, advancing with all their armies, besieging Gibeon and fought against it. Then the men of Gibeon sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal, don't give up on your servants. Come quickly and save us. Help us for all the Amorite kings living in the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua and all his troops, including all his best soldiers, came from Gilgal. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to stand against you. So Joshua caught them by surprise after marching all night from Gilgal. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. He defeated them in a great slaughter of Gibeon, chased them through the ascent of Beth Horon, and struck them down as far as Azekar and Makeda. As they fled from Israel, the Lord threw large hailstones on them from the sky along the descent of Beth Horon, all the way to Azekar, and they died. More of them died from the hail than the Israelites killed with the sword. On that, on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the presence of Israel. Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon over the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on its enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed its setting almost a full day. There's been no day like it before or since when the Lord listened to a man because the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua, Joshua and all Israel with him returned to the camp at Gilgal. So I just wanted to make a number of comments as we've been looking at Joshua, we've noticed that the people of Gibeah in the last chapter had deceived Israel. And as a result, if you like, the Gibeonites were now part of the tribes of Israel. They had made a peace treaty with them and had agreed to be servants of the Israelites. Now, this put a lot of the other kings of, at that time, their noses out of joint. They uh, called together, the king of Jerusalem called the others together, and they marched on Gibeah and surrounded it and fought against it. And then the Gibeonites sent messages to Joshua, and Joshua raised an army, traveled all the way up from the Jordan Valley to the heights, most likely at night, and we assume attacked them at dawn, throwing them into confusion and they all fled for their lives. It's a great victory, but Joshua wanted it to be an even greater victory. So, so for Joshua, the problem was that they were getting away. So they were leaving Gibeah, fleeing, descending back to their cities. And so Joshua prayed, Sun stand still over Gibeon, the moon over the valley of Agilon, 
and the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on its enemies. It's amazing that these things actually happened. It's amazing that as they're descending, I understand about 700 meters, that the Lord threw hail upon these five kings and that they were, and that more people we read were killed by the hail than by the soldiers of Joshua, the troops of Israel. So anyway, I, as I was thinking about this, I think there's a number of lessons for us to pick up on. The first one is that there's nothing too big for God. Boyce in his commentary on Joshua talks about big godders and little godders. In other words, uh, we could ask ourselves the question, do we believe that our God is capable of doing these amazing miracles? Do we believe in a God that can do the incredible, to do the unbelievable? The little godders are those who think, well, God can tinker at the edges. God can sort of do a few little tricks. But the big godders are people that think to themselves, God can do all things. God can do amazing things. Many people in uh, Christian history, many commentators have sought to try to understand, you know, the sun standing still for a day and so on. I don't really have an answer to that. Some people will say one thing and some will say another thing. I just see it as, an, as a miracle, a miracle of God's power. Nothing like this had ever happened before. And uh, our God can do these most incredible things. And so we ought to be big godders. We ought to be people that can pray big, pray for things that seem impossible. The second thing we could say is Joshua is prepared to ask for the impossible in front of the Old Testament church. He did so. He prayed that the sun stand still in front of his soldiers, in front of the troops of Israel. Quite an amazing thing to do. He didn't sneak away and do it. He he did it publicly, and I think we need to be bold in our prayers as well, bold to ask God to do the unbelievable, which in most cases for us is that he would turn those who have a heart of stone into a heart of flesh, and that more and more people would know Jesus as Lord. We know from a New Testament perspective that the God who raised Jesus from the dead can do all things. He can change lives, he can change hearts, he can change the course of history, and he has done so. And so we can pray with all confidence, knowing that nothing is impossible for God. My question today is this, are you a little godder or a big godder? Seems like a strange lot of words, doesn't it? A little godder or a big godder? Is your God too small? Maybe another way of saying it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the privilege of prayer. We hear jo Joshua prayed in Joshua chapter 10. And he prayed for the defeat of Israel's enemies. And they were defeated in this amazing couple of days. We pray, Lord, as we look at the lessons there, that we would be people who prayed with all confidence in your amazing power to do incredible things. And we pray, Lord, in that sense, for those we know, our neighbours, our colleagues at work. We pray, Lord, for people we know from the sports field or from our recreation. We pray, Lord, that you would touch the lives of others so that they might come to know you as Lord. And we know, Lord, that you who turned our heart of stone into a heart of flesh, who raised Jesus from the dead, can do all things. Help us, Lord, to pray with that kind of confidence. We do pray, Lord, that you would be with us this day in all that we do, that we would be a light in a dark world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.